paragliding in Breath of the Wild was pretty awesome. Not only did it make going from point A to point B faster and more fun to do, but it also encourages the player to make more use of the climbing ability. Reaching high vantage points gave the player a way to get more airtime to glide further, while at the same time making discoveries in the overworld easier and more intuitive. It truly was a freeing experience. Gone were the days of so-called Bethesda mountain climbing, being allowed to climb in designated spots only, or relying on mounts or late game vehicles. Now we had most of the tools for limitless traversal available from pretty much the very beginning. Because of these two mobility options, climbing and paragliding, Nintendo went out of its way to differentiate the game from the established formula by calling it open air rather than the traditional open world. But as I've mentioned in previous videos, the air or sky itself wasn't actually utilized all that much in Breath of the Wild. With the exception of some scripted events, enemies, even the ones that fly, are mostly confined to ground level, within reach of the bow. The sky is a safe and effective way to get where you want to go, but all the action and discoveries are still mostly found down on the surface. It seems that for the sequel, Nintendo wants to truly do justice to the open air name and take traversal and exploration to new heights. To the clouds, to be exact. It goes without saying that a setting like this will require new types of mobility, and that is exactly what we find in the new gameplay patents published in December of last year. Out of all three mechanics featured in these patents, this one is probably the least groundbreaking from a game design perspective. But at the same time I would argue that it's also the most necessary inclusion. After all, the sky was by far the biggest focal point of the second teaser, so it's likely gonna play a prominent role. If the sky isn't fun to traverse and explore, it'll significantly hurt the game's experience. As such, in this video I will explain in detail what Link's new aerial mobility will be based on the information inside the patent itself. This will include the different movement options, how they work, as well as the controls and camera positions during the execution. So here we go. One of the first things we noticed in the teaser, aside from the sky itself, it's in the sky! was the way Link was falling, facing down, arms outstretched in a similar way to that of a skydiver, a pose also known as the arch. For many of us this was of course an immediate callback to Skyward Sword, a game which also featured sky traversal and a similar way of free falling when dropping down from great heights. This opening shot is the only footage we have of Link in free fall, so prior to the publication of the patents we had no idea if there was more to it than this. Turns out there is. The description and illustrations clarify that Link will be able to descend in five different ways. Normal falling, low velocity falling, diving falling, backward falling, and high velocity falling. Each one of these has its own type of pose attributed to it. Of course, normal falling and low velocity falling we already know from the first game. Falling in an upright position, arms slightly raised to the side, and drifting down slowly with the paraglider. The other three are new to the sequel. Diving falling is the aforementioned pose we saw in the teaser as well as in Skyward Sword. Backward falling is similar except facing up instead of down, and high velocity falling sees Link almost completely upside down facing the surface, arms tucked to his side. This one is quite similar to Skyward Sword as well where Link could speed up his fall by pressing forward. And speaking of which, here too does each type of body position come with its own speed. Naturally, drifting down with the paraglider is the slowest. After that we have the diving and backward pose, which have the same falling speed. Normal falling is slightly faster, seeing as you have less air resistance in an upright position, and needless to say, high velocity falling is the fastest, since your body is even more aerodynamic when upside down, and you don't have your arms out. According to the text, the character can transition between these poses in two main ways. The first is executed while Link is falling regularly, and the second involves a special action, which in the examples given is demonstrated by the use of the bow. During a regular fall, i.e. when Link is not performing any other actions while in the air, you can transition between poses by pressing and sometimes holding down specific buttons. And the inputs for these are actually mentioned inside the patent, though do keep in mind that these might not be final and subject to change for the finished game. Deploying the paraglider Glider will once again work the same way as it did in the original, by pressing X while airborne, and pressing B will cancel the paraglider and Link will resume his fall. The player can shift into the diving pose either by pressing R or tilting the left control stick upward. This can be triggered not only from a normal fall, but according to the text you can even go straight into a dive from low velocity falling as well. In other words, while paragliding, instead of pressing B to cancel it, you can press R instead and you'll go straight from gliding into a diving pose. Backward falling can only be accessed 
accessed from a dive or from high velocity. This is also referred to as a turnaround instruction. Pressing A while diving will turn Link around and face in the other direction, which in this case causes him to transition into a backward fall. And pressing A again will revert him back to his original orientation. It's as simple as that. High velocity falling is done by pressing and holding R while either diving or backwards falling. For as long as the button is held down, the character will fall at the highest speed possible, and releasing it will slow him back down again, back into a dive. As you can see, there are some small restrictions when it comes to which type of pose you can access from the other, and this illustration gives a good overview of this. Notice that while paragliding you can transition into a normal fall or a dive, but not straight into high velocity or backward falling, meaning you'll have to switch to a dive first before you can access the other two. Similarly, you can also not pull out the paraglider while falling at high velocity. Each pose also comes with its own pros and cons, an example being the amount of freedom of movement you'll have. Obviously, paragliding has the lowest vertical speed, but you can travel the fastest and furthest horizontally. Diving has significantly less horizontal speed than the paraglider, but actually does give you more range of movement when it comes to steering in all directions, including backwards, which was very slow with the paraglider. And because high velocity falling has the fastest vertical speed, you also won't be able to steer Link nearly as much horizontally, making precise landings during this pose less than ideal. The description also states that the camera will react automatically and accordingly when switching between poses. For instance, when going into a dive, the camera will automatically snap into a downward facing position above the character, giving you a clear view of the surface below. Turning around into a backward fall will make the camera move on its own into an upward facing position right below Link, so you can see what's above you. According to the description, this will make it easier for the player to reorient themselves and get a sense of direction, which is definitely a good thing. If you got nothing but clouds around you, I can imagine losing track of what's up and down sometimes if the camera never reacts to the changes in position and orientation. After the camera has snapped into position, it'll most likely relinquish control back to the player, and we'll be free to orient the camera in any direction we please. This would already be a huge improvement over Skyward Sword. Even in the HD version, which does have a free cam, you have zero control over the camera while skydiving. No way to freely look around and see what's above or behind you, for instance. You do have one trigger to look below you, but only on your loft wing. And of course you couldn't even deploy your parasail until the game told you to, which was usually at the last minute, only a few feet off the ground. It really seems like Breath of the Wild 2 will greatly expand upon the limitations of this game when it comes to the freedom of movement and control when skybound. One last thing to mention about the transitions between the different types of falling is that there are bound to be more special operations and exceptions. For instance, the description mentions that if Link simply walks or falls off the edge of an object high in the sky, one of the islands for instance, he will simply fall down as normal and the player will have to transition into a dive or the paraglider manually. However, it also says that if you perform a jump right as you're about to go over the edge, you'll automatically go straight into a dive instead. We already saw something akin to this in the original. Performing a jump above water, for example, would automatically trigger Link to dive, whereas if you just walk off the edge, he falls down normally. So I'm guessing it will work similar to that. But like I said, there's bound to be exceptions as well. If Link jumps from, say, the roof of a house close to ground level, the game probably won't force him into a dive and make him fall flat on his face, though that would be funny. This brings us to the second method, which is unique to special actions. Like I said, in the descriptions and illustrations it mainly focuses on the bow, but at the very end it does also mention shooting a gun, an action of throwing an object like a weapon, or emitting a fireball by magic. Oh sorry, A magic. The cool thing about this method is that here, the player doesn't have to control Link's pose manually. Instead, it's all done automatically depending on the angle of your aim. If you aim all the way straight up, Link's posture will be changed to a backward fall. Move the cursor down, and he will slowly transition into an upside down position. There's essentially radial boundaries that dictate when this change in posture has to take place. And you might also notice that these boundaries overlap. And there's a reason for this. This is to prevent unnatural movement animation. If there was only one set boundary between each pose, right here for example, and you would move the cursor right across the boundary and back again, Link would constantly be shifting between two poses. Which again would look funny, but not exactly be practical. Instead, each pose has its own set boundaries, and they will reset every time Link moves into a new position. 
This system will allow us to have a lot more range and hints that the game will likely feature some crazy aerial fight sequences. After all, why else include such an elaborate aiming mechanic into the game? If an enemy approaches you from above, you'll be able to first turn around, giving you a clear view of the enemy, and then drawing your bow to get a shot. If the enemy shifts his position suddenly, you won't have to worry about changing Link's orientation. Instead, it's all done automatically as long as you have the bow out, and putting away the bow will likely cause Link to resume the falling position he last assumed while aiming. Now, what about bullet time? You know, that immensely helpful mechanic from Breath of the Wild that wasn't in any Zelda game before? Well, the description says that it does still exist. Similar to the original, objects, enemies and projectiles will still be slowed down by a factor of 10, and it'll still consume stamina. The only thing I'm not sure of is what happens when Link completely runs out of stamina. In one instance it mentions that when Link runs out he will transition into a normal fall. However, it also says that paragliding still consumes stamina as well. So, say you run out while you're somewhere high up in the sky. I doubt that would mean that Link would just continue to fall down helplessly for minutes on end, until finally crash landing down on the surface. That would be a pretty severe punishment for such a simple mistake, especially since bullet time drains stamina pretty damn quickly, and some fights might go on for a long time. In Breath of the Wild when you ran out of stamina mid-flight Link would also fall down, and while falling your stamina doesn't fill back up again until you touch solid ground, so I'd imagine that in the sequel they have to do it a bit differently and I'm guessing that during a normal fall your stamina does fill back up again. And well, that's about it for this one. It's not as complex as the other two mechanics and doesn't require much more explanation. I'm just happy to see something like this added to Breath of the Wild's already amazing mobility options. I can only imagine what kind of crazy stuff we'll see in the sky. The type of enemies, boss battles maybe? And who knows, maybe there will be even more additions to traverse the sky besides free falling and paragliding. Even more new powers, grappling hooks, flying vehicles, loft wings, the possibilities are endless. And even with these patents, it's likely that we have an even seen 5% of what we'll be able to do in the game. And with that, we have covered every mechanic featured inside the patents. If you missed the other two, there will be a link in the description as well as the end card. Thank you so much for sticking by with me on this one. A special thanks to you for watching, to my Discord community, mods, and of course my channel members and Patreons. A big thanks to Kanuki and Demaj for joining, and to Merlin, Steven and Parker, and William Morales for rejoining. Welcome and welcome back. You guys are the best. And that is all for now. This is Don signing off and have a good one.